Hey there, I'm a glue stick, so I have one job. I glue kids stuff. So sorry for being jealous of Geico, who does a ton more, like give you 24-7 access to thousands of licensed agents. And Geico has been around for over 75 years and has a 97% customer satisfaction rating. While I've just got mediocre adhesive skills, Geico also has an award-winning mobile app. Uh Uh-oh, arts and crafts time. No eating the glue stick, Miss Lydia. Geico, expect great savings and a whole lot more. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. Stugatz, I feel like such a crazy person as I'm watching some of the things happening in sports. As I see Alabama last night proclaimed a bogus national champion, I watch everything happen last night. Keep in mind, our show, our sensibilities, we like shaking the cages on what are the established conventional wisdoms. The conventional wisdom is that ESPN told you last night that that game was for the championship. They have a committee to do these things. They pour a lot of money into the televised event. They buy all of the watchdogs and give us megacasts so that we could feed our egos and not criticize the product. But the game result last night is only perfect for UCF to declare itself co-national champions tonight because the team that won the championship allegedly last night didn't even have to play a conference championship game. And the team they beat last night was beaten by the team that UCF beat in the bowl. And UCF is undefeated and Alabama is not. You should still be left with a little doubt because of that. Because of that reason. They haven't played. Alabama has not played UCF. Now, UCF finished sixth in the AP poll that came out. The final uh, standings came out today. They finished sixth. But Alabama never played UCF. Alabama lost to Auburn. Georgia Okay, Georgia at least had a second opportunity to beat Auburn and avenge that loss. So if Georgia had won, I don't think UCF has much of an argument today. But Alabama did, and they did. Everything that happened last night says to you not much of a difference between the two teams that were playing for the championship. Correct. But there was only one undefeated team in the country, and that team, by the rules of the system, was denied the chance in a system where Nick Saban already has all the advantages, he's now got a rule advantage in that nobody can come out of nowhere to beat his team because he can get to the championship game without even playing in a conference game, and UCF can't even get to the championship game being undefeated and having the best resume today today that any team has. And what I am telling you is you would have a legitimate argument. This network should be arguing today because this construct is so bogus and we created it. We paid for it. We paid for this construct, this fake champion and this fake system of injustice where we're using all of these bodies to pay the CEOs. ESPN is a made-for-TV event where they just crown a champion and everyone accepts it. And what I'm telling you is this year it's never been more wrong. Never once has it been more wrong. ESPN's got it wrong. The country's got it wrong. The writers have got it wrong. Alabama doesn't have a better resume than UCF, and they should be declared co-champions they really should because the system's bogus it's just a construct that you're respecting and you don't need to respect it just because a committee tells you to that's going to sound crazy to people dan because of what alabama just did just beating clemson and georgia the last two weeks that's going to sound that's fine it it can sound it can sound all crazy all you want what i'm telling you is alabama's resume next to they've won the same they beat the same number of teams that played in bowl games ucf and alabama now today both of them you look at the resumes one of them's got a loss One of them's undefeated. I'm telling you, if I switch the resumes, you'd be telling me, if I switch these resumes, you'd be telling me that UCF is the, if I didn't tell you who was involved, I just showed you resumes and not teams. I didn't tell you it was Nick Saban. I didn't give you the uniforms. I just showed you resumes. Right. Your champion would be UCF today. And if Alabama had that Mm. resume, you'd be making the argument on behalf of Alabama. I, Dan, I don't, I, I don't agree with you personally. You could put the resume side by side. And that's fine without telling me who they are. No, Dan, hold on a Stugatz, second. You're taking the last two games no, and I'm only also, the last two games. I'm also take Dan, I'm take UCF had one big win against Auburn. I mean, maybe you want to call USF. That's, they beat Memphis, a but, ranked team, twice. That's a, that's a bowl team. They beat them twice. That's a bowl team with a good veteran quarterback. I understand that, but I think people forget that they beat Florida State. Alabama did at the beginning of the year with that healthy quarterback when they were preseason they top five injured, in the country. They injured FSU. FSU had six losses this year. All I'm saying, look, you don't have to agree with my argument. You're welcome to disagree with my argument. Thank you. All I'm saying is, 
that the argument on behalf of an outsider champion has never been better than it is today. The best argument in the history of making arguments on behalf of questionable champions in college football today, the best argument can be made for UCF that they deserve this co-championship, this bogus championship just made by ESPN, a regional champion, an SEC champion. That's what was crowned yesterday. Today, more than ever, UCF can make the argument that they are legitimately co-champions and it should be officially sanctioned by the people who sanction these things because they've sanctioned everything else with money and dollars and committees and all of it's bogus. We're just agreeing to the construct. Your, your argument works if you're just paying attention to the fact that on under the L column, they have a zero and Alabama had a one, but the Memphis win, get that out of here. Number 25 in the nation. You want to say they have two top 25 wins? Fine. Then count the LSU and Mississippi State wins, which were more impressive than that Memphis Mike, win. If you're South Florida at could have beaten any team in the country this year. The South Florida team that Central Florida beat, South Florida could have beaten Charlie Strong's team in South Florida. I'm telling you, this is just regional biases and nonsense that people do not know. I told you at the beginning of the season, USF has pros on that field. Those are men. Those are men that well, look like number 78 from Georgia last night. Men like look like that Alabama defense. We're not disagreeing with you that there are talented teams, both UC, uh, USF and UCF. We're not disagreeing with that. There is talent all over the field on both of those teams. What I'm saying is that if you flip-flop the schedules, do you know what Alabama would do to those opponents that UCF played? Mm -hmm. And I don't I, think UCF I, I, is undefeated forgot, if they play Alabama's Here's schedule. what I'm saying to you about the reputation of the SEC, though. Texas a and is not better than Memphis. All those teams, those Mississippi states, not better than South Florida. This is what I'm telling you. This is uniform bias. It's history bias. What I'm telling you is all these coaches who are now, all the dirty coaches who are coming down here to recruit Florida, all of them, Florida now, we've got all the best recruiters in Florida. What I am telling you is Scott Frost just got that Nebraska job because all of these guys have figured out what can be had in Florida. And that UCF team and that USF team – those teams look to me like Clemson and Alabama this year. And the only thing keeping them from looking like that is the fact that there's uniform bias. That you just see Nick Saban on the sideline and you see Alabama's uniforms. Man, UCF was the best offense I saw in the country this year. In the country, they're the best offense I saw. They can move the ball on anybody. Listen, there's they were so much better at offense than Alabama was this year. You can't sit here today and say there's not a little doubt because Alabama never had to play UCF. You can't. You simply. I'm saying there's never been more doubt. Is what I'm saying that if you legitimately want to examine this doubt, never in the history of championships has there ever been more legitimate doubt of. Wait a minute, I'm not sure there's that much difference between those two teams. But people, Kirk Herbstreit, I've heard him say this a number of times. They're going to say to you, Dan, that the reason UCF didn't get in, if UCF plays a Wisconsin. Wisconsin early in the season and beats them, then the momentum starts to steamroll. And if you go undefeated, there's a good chance you make it to the Final Four. They're going to throw the schedule in your That's face. That's fine. I, but what I'm saying is that by rule, you've been NFL teams don't get to choose their schedule. What I'm saying is by all of the system's rules are working to keep a legitimate champion from the chance at the game. You can criticize their schedule. I will not dispute that. What I'm telling you is they don't have a chance to get in the game because this bogus system, by rule, keeps them out of it. And the only undefeated team in the country this year isn't even allowed to play for it. And what I'm saying is we're crowning a bogus champion today if there's not doubt about whether Central Florida should be the co-champion today. Yeah, but part of the NFL schedule is locked in. You play the, the team that corresponds with where you finish in your division. You play those other teams in your conference, so that's why you always see Patriots, Steelers. I, I know, but Mike, and we do all this stuff. We want to change Western Conference and Eastern Conference. We do it in basketball. That's the accepted construct there. What I'm telling you is that in college football, the accepted construct is flimsier than any of our other championship deciders where that's you're, fair that, but that's that's fair. Um, we just decided ESPN just decided a, a committee is going to decide right imagine if the NFL allowed a committee and we talked about this last week I'd like it I would like it if we had this in professional football to allow a committee to decide who the eight playoff teams are so we could get the Titans up on out of here like just get the Titans out of the playoffs. You you tell me have a committee decide these are my power rankings. I'd ra I'd I'd prefer to do it that way. But they're that's, taking injuries into account all of it. Yes, yes, that'd be I, great. I prefer. But the way that they're doing it right now in the pros is the accepted construct that all of us agree 
is fair enough. What I'm telling you is the one that we're doing in college football is the most unfair of all of them. And you just had it proven because you were denied a legitimate championship team and championship game because of the rules and a committee and the money of ESPN simply said so. Very passionate this morning. Weirdly. It looks like they got the message, though. They they have Sanford scheduled two years from now, so they're doing a better job scheduling. There's a lot of merit to what Sugats is saying. You want to get people's attention. Do what Fresno State did years ago, mm-hmm. and you, you schedule in Oregon State, and you make an or impression. Or Boise State. Boise State did it every year. They played so I know, but this yeah. is all about, you want to do the Middle American uh, the middle American analogy that Colin Cowherd fans would like. This is all about, right now, all we're uh, rewarding in college football is inherited money. We're making it really hard for people to get to Alabama's privilege. We're keeping Central Florida from being able to get like what gets hand me down. Got there. What gets hand me down? Yeah, in a big conference, Clemson got there. They but, got there. But what gets hand me down are certain adv- disadvantages that makes perfect from UCF not even be good enough. But if UCF keeps growing, they're going to just be complicit in all of this because they'll join a bigger conference. That's right. The established construct will get even more mutated, and then somebody else will be denied. Will be denied. Don Lebatard, America's fastest growing sports show. Stugatz, because when you start from zero and you have one viewer, you're growing fast. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. So, if you did not watch the regional championship of the SEC decided last night. This is what happened. Alabama had a player seem like he had a seizure on the sidelines. Alabama had a player fighting with other players on the sideline. Alabama scored zero points in the first half. Alabama benched its quarterback. Alabama in an overtime game had the game lost because they were in a second and 26 situation. Alabama is champion again. If you can figure out how all of that happened, <laughs> you're better at this than I am. Alabama is champion again just because basically Alabama said so. Did you mention missing the game winning kick at the end of regulation? Oh, oh, yeah, I didn't mention, too. I didn't even yeah. mention that. That's right. And missed the, the, the game winning kick in regulation, endured a 51 yarder from Rodrigo Blakenship, who's kicked 68 before in practice. Yeah. It's Blankenship, and that's a fine, Dana. What did I say, Blankenship? Yeah, it's the second time. I let it slide the first time in the local hour because we're all tired today because we were working late last night, but, you know. But Fair if enough. You, but if you're going to mess up his name, I prefer it that way than what you did last night. Right. I made the ship uh, sound a little bit different than it does. That's fine. I'll pay the fine. Rodrigo Blankenship is a weird name. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Uh, Rodrigo Blankenship, the wispy mustache, glasses-wearing kicker for Georgia. Ask, ask the, the audience at Levitard Show on Twitter if that's a weird name. Uh, we're concerned uh, about you. We have we have an issue with you because you're supporting UCF in a way. Who doesn't want your support, by the way? They don't deserve you and your passion because you tried to partner with them. ESPN tried to partner with UCF, and they wanted nothing to do with us. And now you're giving them, essentially what you're doing is you're giving them their publicity for, for free. They don't have to do anything. They rejected every single offer we made to do parades up there, to hand them a national championship trophy. You've been singing their praises the entire year. They wanted nothing to do with this radio show or ESPN, and I don't think they deserve your support. I don't. We made 4,000 T-shirts, 4,500 T-shirts. We've got a giant trophy for them here. We were negotiating with their athletic department that was on board to celebrate the co-national champion because we really could do this. I know there was an Auburn team that went undefeated about 15 years ago. But that Auburn team, who was it? Jason Campbell, Ronnie Brown, uh, who else? They had another running back there. Cadillac Cadillac, Cadillac was the Williams. running back. Yeah. That team won undefeated and didn't get to play for the championship because the two teams that were playing for the championship also were undefeated all season. What I'm telling you is there's only one undefeated team in the entire country. Right. This is much easier. There's one undefeated team and it was denied a chance to play for the championship. It's but, time to pivot. Yeah. You obviously haven't yes. been rejected much in your life. This is what you do when you get rejected, Dan. Right. Yeah. Now you start spinning it like you're too good for them. Exactly. You never wanted them. You see who did they play? 
You're, you're not good enough for us. We're the biggest show in the world. I mean, I just told you. It's your problem. To, right. I just told you to dial it back. And what do you do? You dial it up. I mean, enough. Okay, so Pivot. you guys. But wait, you guys want me enough to, of UCF. So you guys want me to be petty because yeah, UCF UCF's yes. not that hot. Yes, yes please. Yes, we petty. can do better than UCF. I mean, seriously. God. Bigger fish to fry. UCF. Pride. I mean, jeez. All right. UCF's not going to age well. All right, so it just peters out here. Well, we just Frost is gone anyway. They're done. Okay. It's over for you, All right, CF. so we we limp away with our four thousand t-shirts and our very heavy made trophy there, two thousand eighteen national champion. We just limp away and that's it. We don't, don't fight for this the, anymore. Don't mention that we did any of that, matter, man. That's, but I want to be Dan that's... Quixote. Oh, no, oh, man, they don't no. deserve. But they don't you. deserve right. us. Please be yeah, human like the rest of us. Yeah, right. man. Yep. Out of here. Jeez. You don't want me? Fine. You I don't want you. Anyway. Oh, so yeah. uh, you guys are receiving this as I sound like I'm groveling, like I'm I'm outside the window with the woman who has scorned me and she doesn't want anything to do with me, and I sound like I'm begging still for yeah, her yeah, approval. Yeah, Holding yeah, your trophies yeah. and your t-shirts. No is no, Dan. Exactly. Yeah. I am uh, John. Uh, I am John. No is no. I am John. Q- that's a different thing. That's totally different. John Cusack. I'm outside. Uh, w- holding the trophy outside of the window, but no, that was rom- Cusack was desperate, but that was actually romantic. You guys are saying I'm pathetic. Yes. I'm pathetic, pleading with UCF and pleading on behalf of UCF. You know what? That's not romantic, by the way. Can we just say that in movies that's romantic, and people say, "Oh my God, I wish that happened." If that happened to you in real life, you would call the police. All right, put that no on one the wants poll. that. Put that on the poll, Guillermo at Levitard Show. If someone did to you what John Cusack did to that woman and say anything. Would you call the police in real life? <laughs> Demand once more He's money. Right. I think it's going to be lopsided. Man. I really do. So, that's a stalker. That's not romantic. That's a stalker. Don Lebatard. I can make the argument that Calvin Johnson's the third best receiver ever. Easily, yes. Not easily, Stugatz. No, you easily could. Look at the numbers. Easily could. Stugatz. Like, your contribution to this conversation was just an easily. I was trying to, you know, support you. Keep your support. Listen, you made a statement. I was supporting it with easily. That's what you do for a friend. What does my friend do back to me? Criticizes my support. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, guest on the Dan Lebatar Show. Up here via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Terrell Davis, Hall of Famer, going to be there at noon Eastern. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. Here's your Sports Center update. In the final AP poll of the college football season, Alabama finished number one, of course. Georgia, number two. UCF is ranked number six. Unbelievable, man. That Un- is. It's unbelievable. I, I mean, sixth one, is. But they got four number one votes. But, Mike, they should. Listen, whether you agree with Dan or not, a number one, they should be higher than number that's, six. That's so ridiculous. Like, and, it's and just beat Auburn, stupid. Mike. I mean, sports is run by dumb people. I'm going to just say it, and I'll get into it in a second. Sports, all of sports is run by dumb people. The Westgate Las Vegas Superbook, they're not dumb. On Monday, they installed the Crimson Tide. Enough, man. As the 2018 favorites at 3-1. to one. They are a three to one favorite to repeat as national champions. Georgia is next at nine to two. Texas, Wisconsin, Auburn, and Miami all are twenty five to one. And finally, Liam Gallagher says he reached out to his former Oasis bandmates about a reunion, but says they told him they weren't up for it. This comes on the heels of Noel Gallagher's recent comments about how he wouldn't want to reunite with Oasis because it would be undignified to be a stadium rocker when he's fifty. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Follow me down this path here, Stugatz, because I want to make sure that people understand on the front end. They think I am a Nick Saban hater because he left the Miami Dolphins many years ago, was an average NFL coach. And on his way out of town, I ripped him mercilessly on every ESPN platform, calling him a vacuum cleaner salesman. And I have regrets about how I handled that entire time. But I called him a lot of names because he was always demanding the discipline of others and not himself. And he wasn't very nice to people when he was in Miami. Right. Uh, It was so unlike you. I remember thinking at the time when you were doing it, wow, this is, I mean, that's something I would do. I, I have my regrets about how I handled that whole situation. So let me explain to you, the audience here, how much I have, how much respect I have for the job that this person has done atop college football where he is always in the games that matter 
However, having said that, and I don't think you can do, no matter how you feel about Nick Saban, like him, dislike him, think he's dirty, whatever you want to think, you must respect his life's work effort. Like, you you cannot see what keeps happening here and not respect it, no matter how many biases you have. It's five national championships in nine years. Well, here, well, but hold on. It's not just five national championships in nine years. I feel like you just had your window to get them because they've done that in nine years without quarterbacks. Right. Now, but now my, ga- now my guess is the quarterbacks are going to want to go over there and play with those guys that only need a quarterback because they can win championships on defense and special teams. Like Alabama's defense and special teams, if they didn't even have an offense, would be ranked higher than UCF. Correct. Yes. Like if it was, ju- if their team was just special teams and defense, Guillermo, put this on the poll. If Alabama's team was just defense and special teams, would that team be in the top five? Who plays offense? You just pick some guys just off whatever. of defense. You don't and have offense. Teams. No. Okay. No, there's, just, there's no offense. There's no offense. Okay. I still think that we'd rank them in the top five. We'd say, yes, they're that good. Wait. So if you punt the ball to Alabama in this situation and they don't score, you get the ball back yes, when you tackle them? No, what I'm saying is Alabama would just have a punter. And field goal kickers. That would be their offense. And just let the defense and special teams do the rest, and they will pin you in your area, and then you'll kick a couple of field goals. All you're allowed for offense is field goal kickers and special teamers. Nick Saban has more national titles than all other FBS coaches combined. Okay, but now I want to deconstruct this as everyone sits here today and talks about this stupid argument. Is Saban the best? Yes, maybe, no. This is what I want to talk about today, is the number of advantages he now has. The guy who we already believe to be Belichick, better and smarter than everyone else. And I'm not thinking it's because he's that smart. I'm thinking it's because football is run by a whole lot of dumb people that we assign smart traits just because they're the general of the dumb army. He's the smartest of the dumb army? Uh, yeah, it, Nick Saban is running this sport, at least in part, because he can be smarter than everyone else. Usually in these billion-dollar industries, you can't be quite this much smarter than everybody else. Some of these advantages you're about to get to, though, because you're right, he does have all the advantages. He's earned them. I mean, Correct. he created these Correct. advantages. But this is yeah. what I'm saying, is that now is when you have to fear the monster. Right. Because now, now he's been doing this without quarterbacks. He's been lopsiding the game because he has so many advantages. He gets all of the recruits that he wants. When Nick Saban lands in his helicopter, and I've told you the story before, Nick Saban won the championship and was on the plane flying out of Miami making blueprint plans with his agent. Now's the time to capitalize. Get me millions of dollars for my facilities. Now, right now. And he's probably doing that last night. As soon as that pass gets made last night, he's probably doing it again. More, more, more advantages. Get me more advantages. And Alabama will because he's the CEO and he gets all of the players. And when he lands on your campus in his helicopter, it means something that it doesn't mean when Kirby Smart does it. Or anyone else in the sport. He is the CEO of college football landing on your campus to get your kid. And that mother is going to be swayed by that man's very presence arriving on her doorstep. No doubt. And the kid, Dan. The kid's going to sit there and go, wow, look at all. This guy puts people in the NFL. And when they get there, they're good. Well, here's the other element. Now this is where it snowballs. If you want to get into the business of professional football from the inner cities, There is one place you go, one in the country. There are two. There is one that is a factory for football where they've got the best CEO and he's got the magic gifts that will get everyone to the pros. Even if they don't have a quarterback, he will win the championship and he will get your kid to the pros. Other schools can do it, to be clear. He gives you the best chance. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, other schools can do it, but nobody's got now the reputation he does. And what I'm saying is when he arrives there, he gets the kids that he wants. Maybe there's some margin for error. Some kid wants to play where his dad played or one kid wants to play where he's home. There's a margin for error. But on an unscientific thing, he gets all of the guys that he wants. An enormous advantage. Lane Kiffin told us every time they stand on a practice field, he could see our guys are better than their guys. So Nick Saban has all the built-in advantages that you could possibly have over everyone in the sport. And then on top of that, the rules support by committee and SEC bias 
that turns a game between two SEC teams yesterday into the championship game sanctioned by Disney while a team gets totally left out that doesn't have any of the advantages that Nick Saban has. UCF will never even get to test Alabama because all of the rules of the system also favor Alabama. He's got all of the advantages, and from that place, a lot of people could succeed. Once you get it to that place, how Pete Carroll succeeded from there, sustaining it is difficult, but he's built a monster that I don't see how it comes undone. I don't see how all of these dynasties have an expiration date. How is this one going to come undone? Because they're more powerful than they've ever been, and now they're going to start getting quarterbacks when they got a freshman quarterback playing out there who looked like a de- he Man, Nick Saban, that's the kid who beats Nick Saban. It's the only kid who beats Nick Saban, and now he's on Nick Saban's side. The running quarterback has been the only one that can beat Nick Saban in college football, and now Nick Saban's got one, and he's got one for the next three years. Who can actually throw? Who too. can actually throw the football? Unlike Jalen Hurts, you're winning the championship on the night. A guy goes, leaves the field on a stretcher you don't know what the hell's wrong with him but did he have a seizure one of your other guys is fighting with his teammates on the sideline and you coaches. scored you scored zero points in the first half and you have because you've been in this game so often so little fear of situations that you bench your quarterback in a way no other coach in college football would have done not a one not a one has the confidence and the fearlessness of having been in that game not a one would have done that and that's another advantage nick saban has he can coach in that game fearlessly because he knows he's going to be in it again next year maybe urban I mean, no, maybe Urban. Mark Mark Rick did it, but he did it with Evan Sheriffs, which isn't the wait, same. No, no, as wait. Tua. In a championship game, I in mean, a national championship if, game. If, if Rick's doing that against Pitt, he might be doing that in a national championship game too. Urban Meyer, maybe. Um, all I'm saying is that's yet another advantage for Nick Saban that when he's on the sideline deciding on halftime that his team's got zero points, it's a lot harder for Kirby Smart to make the decision of going to his second string quarterback than it is for Nick Saban because he's got the credentials and who and who's you could criticize him but what difference does that make he's got the right. advantage he's certainly got the advantages over programs like UCF that goes without a doubt but there is a certain number of elite college football programs that you're parsing Oregon has all the facilities and the relationship with Nike and they get the quarterbacks and they haven't won one I know this guy's won six I know Mike but what I'm telling you is the advantage that's in, that Nick Saban has are so overwhelming in every respect that Nick Saban can win championships without quarterbacks. He's done it. No one else can do that. The other players are so good everywhere. They're so much better than everyone else that they can win without good quarterback play. And at halftime, they just benched the one guy that was bad, brought in the other guy, and they fixed it. Yeah, when Urban beat him in the semifinal, he had to have three of those quarterbacks. That's right. He had to, Urban Meyer had to have three bleeping guys who could win the title. <laughs> Nick Saban doesn't need that. The only way you could beat him is if you have three quarterbacks and he has none. Don Lebatard is, is saving, saving the best. best. Yes, maybe, no. Stugatz is saving the best. Yes, maybe, no. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Allison, can you see if you get us uh, Lane Kiffin? I'd like to talk to Lane Kiffin about what he saw last night. Reese Davis is going to join us here at 1130. But Lane Kiffin has a way of being honest about things. Uh, and I want to talk to him about what he saw last night. He just went on the Dan Patrick show. And what did he say, Stu Uh It's pretty fascinating. He said that if Nick Saban, if Tua didn't play on Monday night, uh, in all likelihood, he would have transferred because that he didn't want to sit behind Jalen Hurts anymore. And if he wasn't going to go to him there, he's never going to go to him. And so he said if he didn't play last night, there's a... There's a good chance that Tua would have transferred after the season. How perfect is that for Nick Saban? It's great. How great is that to have the fearlessness of that is that is one of the blessings of having fearlessness in leadership, Stugatz, that you can make decisions and the decisions end up bouncing your way just because you have the conviction of your beliefs because right. you don't fear anything. So you switch quarterbacks and you basically make your team better for the next three years because this kid's not going to transfer on you because this kid that you played last night is clearly better than Jalen Hurts. But it's also important to point out that Nick doesn't care. Because if Jalen played well, Jalen would have stayed in that game, and he would have lost the quarterback that everyone's talking about I, today. I am telling you <laughs> that Nick Saban gets to do that job with a fearlessness that nobody gets to do that job with, not even Belichick. Because Belichick, 
by rule, he is his his advantages are diluted because there's a salary cap meant to keep everything equal. Can you imagine what would happen if Belichick could actually get all of the players that he wants specifically <laughs> for his system? Right. Like Nick Saban is getting Nick Saban might not get all the recruits, but he's getting all of the kinds of guys that he wants because there's a factory line. He's like, I need a slot receiver. Here are ten that I want. If I get any one of them, they'd be perfect for my system. I'm going to fight all these schools over the 10 of them, but I'm going to get one of them every time because I'm Nick Saban. And he just caught a break last night where he wasn't even smart enough to see that the quarterback he's got on the bench is already better than the one that he's playing. But the the circumstances forced him into playing a guy he didn't want to play. Right. Right. And now he gets to keep the guy for several years. He might have transferred. But there were two rumblings throughout the season that everyone that covers that team is like, they got this kid that's really good. And Kirby Smart, there's this audio. Tua didn't catch Kirby Smart by surprise. They actually prepared for him. Yeah, absolutely. We talked long about it and uh, talked about how the ways we'd play him. He had played enough snaps. We'd seen him on tape. We told her about halftime. There was no question that they were going to him because they were struggling and they needed some momentum. And uh, he provided them some juice and uh, got them some momentum, got the momentum swung back their way. And he's a good player. You know, he's got confidence in his arm. Uh, he scrambles and makes plays, throws the ball downfield. A really talented freshman. I mean, he reminds you of Jake with a lot of the things he did. Um, he's got poise in the pocket, and he made the plays when he had to. And Lane Kiffin is saying he has no doubt. To be exact, to give you the exact quote, he's saying he has no doubt. Mike, keep in mind the guys that we're talking about here are all guys that have surrounded Nick Saban for many, many years. These guys know. Like, I think Kirby Smart, what he's leaving out there is he also knows Kirby Smart. Like, yeah, if he doesn't play him soon, the kid's going to leave. Like, they all know that. They all coach for Nick Saban. It's amazing. And it worked out perfectly Lane, for him. Lane was pretty vocal on Twitter. you got to throw the ball downfield. Yes. And it appears very clear to us all watching it. Jalen wasn't the guy to do that. Uh, Nick Saban is the CEO of college football because it's not just that he's got all the advantages. Now the guys who worked under him are going to work with those same advantages because Kirby Smart is oh, – yes. Nick Kirby Smart is in that game with all of the things he learned at Nick Saban. Now the Nick Saban disciples are going to climb, having learned all the things. You saw what Lane Kiffin did at FAU this year. Yep. Like the, the disciples are going to start doing the same things in this system. And honestly, honestly, Stugatz, college sports for being the billion, multi-billion dollar industry that it is, is ripe for smart people to come in and exploit market inefficiencies because there are so many dumb people running these programs. And you only have to have one of the 30 best ones in order to be a real monster business at your school. It's a good point. Like, yeah. I, honestly, though, but there are people, the for like, people the, no, in, yeah. the, like Silicon Valley, the things that they see, the Nick Sabans of the world in Silicon Valley, the things that they see that the rest of us don't see in terms of business opportunity. Imagine if you can be somebody who's rushing into the system and all you got to do is be smarter than Will Muschamp. <laughs> like, I'm talking about a real, you got to be smarter than Ed Orgeron. <laughs> Seriously. I'm saying you got like a guy who knows that graphs and charts and market inefficiencies and how to run business and reads leadership books, and what you're going after is the program of Ed Orgeron. And you're going to make like five, you know, three, four, five million a year. But I think if you have that ability, you can make a lot more money doing something else. Uh, probably, but it'd be a lot of fun, right? We talked to that Coastal Carolina coach who went from whatever, e-finance. That guy decided, bleep it, I'm a billionaire. I don't want to do it anymore. I want to coach a college football team. And then he went to coach Coastal Carolina. I Man, I'm here for that. The billionaires deciding they want to be Nick Saban. You got Jeff Bezos on the sideline. Yeah. Well, Phil Knight already I mean, did. Phil Knight's already doing that. He's doing it in the shadows the best he can. But I'm saying let's take it out of the shadows. Let's just have Oregon really be a Nike school. Like have their mascot be a Nike swoosh. Have Phil Knight be the CEO on the sidelines actually calling the plays. Let's get, let's you see if Phil Knight wants to go after Saban. You threw out a hypothetical, but that's what they do. Yeah, no, but now I no, do more. More. Lane Kiffin next. Attention shoppers, clean up on aisle 14. Clean up on aisle 14. Someone dropped a jar of pickles. 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 Beatboxing at a big box store. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. A red 
Push a minivan. Push has the lights on. Push in the parking lot. Push a Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Geico. Push a button.